In this did he or didn't he film, a social media influencer falls for a young man who may have killed his teacher, but with the evidence kind of slim against him, there's a question of whether or not the man is a fall guy or if he really committed this crime. So to summarize the film, when we're introduced to Diamond, she's at a point in her life where she's doing well as a social media influencer, but in terms of her personal life, her finances are kind of crappy. She's messing around with married men, has sex tapes out, and she's just pretty much a hot ass mess. And what is kind of the thing that tips everything over is that she gets a DUI. And with that, her social media influencer career starts to stall a little bit because people aren't trying to book her as much. Or at least her main contact is not trying to book her. So with her hitting that point where her parents are talking about cutting her off, enter Sadiq, who is a man who DMs her about his situation in which he's accused of killing his teacher slash tutor almost 10 years ago and he's hoping that even with her situation with a DUI and everything maybe she can help him and she's so touched by his story and also you know trying to bounce back a little bit that she decides to have her lawyer named Cassandra help Sadiq to appeal his case this leads to her getting some positive clout even infamously being compared to Kim Kardashian. But as time passes and multiple people pop out from Sadiq's past, so comes the question of whether he may have actually did the crime or if he was just a fall guy so that someone else can get away with it. So when it comes to our review of this film, I'm going to admit we're definitely a little bit more critical than we need to be. And that's just because... BET, when it comes to their films, they're all over the place. But without a doubt, you cannot deny that when it comes to Iman in his role as Sadiq, he killed it. He has the charm that we saw as Rob in The Shy in terms of you getting very comfortable with his character to the point where you definitely, without even hearing the evidence, think that, you know, this is a case of them trying to keep a black man down, yada, yada, yada. But on top of that, the way that Sadiq and Diamond bond, it really makes it seem that Amon could easily fit into that role of that being that over six feet something man that you hear so many people dream about. And I just hope that he gets a chance to more so get the kind of roles where he can be like Rob on the shy, more than be like Sadiq, at least in terms of everything we see Sadiq eventually become. So when it comes to our next topic, it's a low point, and that's this weird extended interview segment with Young Jock. I don't know why this was kept. I guess it's because Young Jock has name recognition, maybe, but it comes at a point where Sadiq and Diamond are in a good place, and his case is really rolling, and then you have this interview segment, which just kills the momentum of the film. It pretty much puts a mute on whatever Sadiq and Diamond's relationship has. And outside of name recognition, I really don't know why it stayed in this movie. It seems like one of the first things that I would hope an editor would cut because it just brings absolutely no value. If anything, it's a liability to the film because it messes up with the pacing so badly. So when it comes to the on-offense topics, the first issue that we have is that when it comes to the build up to the twist, things don't make a whole lot of sense. Now, yes, it is understood that this teacher was very beloved because she had a son care for kids who was going through things. But the first person who comes who kind of friends Sadiq and all that, they show up once or twice, maybe broke into Diamond's home, and then they disappear. Then comes the second person who's also stalking Diamond, coming to the house, leaving pictures and everything, and it kind of leaves you to wonder, why is there nothing being done? Why is, security fitted, why is the security not being pumped up a bit? Why are the cops not being called? How come Diamond's not getting a security detail or something since clearly her parents and her family have his money so 
why is this nothing being done? Why is it that this this vibe that because she opened up a can of worms that she's just supposed to she is just supposed to deal with what she's caused? It makes absolutely no sense to me. So the second on offense topic is just when it comes to this film, I think so much time is put into making Sadiq this lovable guy and kind of building this romance in the beginning that when it comes to doing the actual depth of the film and building up what happened the day that the teacher died, it doesn't do it justice. Because you can tell that when it comes to Sadiq's, Sadiq's past and also this other person's past, the teacher was definitely someone who invested in kids who didn't come from the best areas, who didn't come from the best family life, and that potentially caused her some issues. Not only issues between her and the kids and their relationship maybe being inappropriate, but also between her husband and other people. This is something that I think they more so talk about to make you fully feel so that you can understand why the teacher sometimes cross the line too much or even fully understand these kids in their home life to the point where it's less of a realization and more of something felt. And granted, we know not every movie is going to be some Oscar nominee type of film, but... I don't know, something about it still, even many hours separated from watching the film, it still kind of lingers in my thoughts about how maybe something could have been done better. The next on offense topic is just Diamond Story and mainly how it, the interest in it just wanes so quickly in the film. For it's almost like as soon as Sadiq is introduced, he quickly eclipses anything Diamond has going on, whether it's the DUI, her issue with her parents, social media, career kind of stalling and all that. And then when you add in everything that comes with Sadiq, like Cassandra's storyline with her having this back and forth with the district attorney, who was Sadiq's lawyer, by the way, and got him in jail. And then bringing the characters who want Sadiq kept in prison. After some point, Diamond, she might have been the person who introduced this storyline, you know, the catalyst, but once everything starts going she pretty much becomes an afterthought to the point where being left with her in the end is kind of a lackluster way to end the film because at that point you're like you're the person i care about the least yet i'm watching your epilogue i don't care what happens to you i want to know what happened to these other people overall under his influence is pretty much a vehicle so that Iman Shumpert can shine and show that he's not only capable of being a leading man, but his acting career should be taken seriously, especially if they allow this man to be the romantic lead that he seems destined to be.